In this video, we'll be solving a polynomial inequality that's quartic. And the inequality we're given is x to the power 4 plus 5x to the power 3 plus 5x squared minus 5x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do is find a factor that works. I always say try small integers, positive or negative, 1 to 3. So 1, 2, 3, or negative 1, negative 2, or negative 3. Let's try x equals 1 to start. And I would like you to write it like this. Try x equals 1. Here's going to be what I get. 1 to the power 4 plus 5, 1 to the power 3, plus 5, 1 squared, minus 5, times 1, minus 6. Notice I don't put equal 0 yet, because I don't know. And that's a common communication error. Okay, so this is 1 plus 5 plus 5 minus 5 minus 6, which is 6, 11. Yeah, I can see it equals 0. All right. Since it equals 0, that means I've got a factor. So let's write that. We're going to use synthetic division. Please watch the video on synthetic division if you don't know what I'm doing here. Factor goes on the outside of the box. On the inside, I write my coefficients of my expression, a 1, a 5, a 5, a negative 5, and a negative 6. And again, video on synthetic division will teach you how to do this. Bring down the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add multiply and if you don't know what I did there please watch this synthetic division video nonetheless these are my remainders so these are my constant this is my x this is my x squared these are my x cubed so we have now partly factored x and notice here it's not plus one it's minus one the factor is different this is I said factor, but it's really a zero. So we have x minus one here. And then we have times x cubed plus six x squared plus 11 x plus six. And all that still greater than or equal to zero. We gotta try something else. Notice that I used one before. One might work again, it could still be divisible by 1 again, but let's try negative 1 just to see what will happen. If I try negative 1 and I'm just working with this piece here, I'm done with that x minus 1 part. So try x is negative 1, you get negative 1 cubed plus 6 times negative 1 squared plus 11 times negative 1 plus 6, which is negative 1 plus 6 minus 11 plus 6. Hey, all right, it worked. I must have known. E equals zero. So I've got another factor. That's great. So I'm going to do synthetic division again. Again, it's really a zero, but I know it's going to produce a factor for me. So here's negative one, and we're just using this cubic part now. There's a one here, six, 11, and a six. Synthetic division, bring down the one, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. All right, doing good. So we have our x minus one bracket from before and a new bracket. This x minus one is a zero, so that's an x plus one. And we're left with a quadratic, x squared plus five x plus six, and all that being greater than or equal to zero. So for x squared plus 5x plus 6, I'm trying to multiply to 6. This is a video factoring using Bergman technique. What multiplies to 6 adds to 5. The numbers are 2 and 3. So we have, and you don't have to write we have, but in some sort of statement. So now we have x plus, x minus 1, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, all greater than or equal to 0. Let's list our zeros. And let's list them in order. We can look at it and see there's going to be zeros here of 
1, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So our zeros are negative 3. You can do it in two steps if you want. Write the zeros, then put them in order. Lowest one's negative 3, then negative 2, then negative 1, then 1. Those are all our zeros. So now we have to make an interval table. Interval sign. We have a big table as we got to check before, between, and after all the zeros. So x is less than negative 3 before the lowest zero or between these two zeros. So negative 3 is going to be the low end and x is greater than that but less than negative 2 or between negative 2 and negative 1 or between negative 1 and 1 one more after the last zero so that's greater than it's always gonna look like this a bunch of less thans or greater than the last thing okay we're gonna sub into this final factored inequality and we're just looking is it positive or negative sub in less than negative three any number you want like negative a thousand doesn't matter as long as it's less than negative three negative a thousand you would get negative negative, negative, and negative. Four negatives multiplied together, that gives a positive. How about something between negative three and negative two, like negative 2.5? Negative 2.5 would make this brackets negative. Negative 2.5 here would be negative. Negative 2.5 here would be negative. But here, it's gonna be positive. Negative two and a half plus three is a positive. And when you have three minuses and a positive multiplied together, you get a negative. All right, between negative two and negative one, so how about negative 1.5? Negative 1.5 would make this negative, make this negative, but negative 1.5 would make that positive and positive. And now we've got minus times a minus is a plus, times a plus times a plus gives positive. Okay, how about between negative one and one. The obvious choice, something easy to pick, zero. Sub in zero here, you get negative, but sub in zero here or here or here, they're all positives. And so you get negative times three positives, which of course makes a negative. Whew, last one. Something bigger than one. Any number you want. Doesn't have to be a thousand. You could choose two. Two take away one is positive. Two plus one is positive. Two plus two is positive. Two plus three is positive. A whole bunch of positives multiplied together give positive. And that's good, because now we've almost got our answer. We can restate the inequality if you want, write out the actual inequality. I'm just going to say the inequality is true when, and now I'll look at my inequality. It's supposed to be greater than or equal to zero. So that would mean it has to be positive. That's this one, this one, or this one. So where is it positive? When x is less than negative 3, comma, also between negative 2 and negative 1, comma, and when x is greater than 1. It's almost our answer, but one more thing we have to go back and check. If it were just less than or just greater than, we'd be done. But the question was greater than or equal to, which means you're allowed to equal the 0. So you can be less than or equal to negative 3 you can be between or at negative one and negative two. And you can be greater than or equal to one. And now we're done. We've solved this polynomial inequality by trying using factor theorem to get a zero or factor. In this case, it's the zero we use for synthetic division, which gives us our factor. We had to do it again because we still had a cubic. Found another factor that worked. Use synthetic division, we got down to a quadratic, so we used Bergman technique, might have had to do decomposition or chart, or even quadratic formula. We ended up with a factored expression, so we identified the zeros, made the interval table, found the positive and negative intervals, and picked the ones we wanted, in this case all the positive intervals, and then finally added the equal signs because we're allowed to equal the zeros. Well done.